Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time we'll be checking out the PLS Assassin 120 Mini. Let's see how it performs. Right then guys, well this is the PLS Assassin 120 Mini. This is one of the latest air coolers. This is basically the PLS Assassin, but it's the Mini version. So let's have a look, shall we? Right, so first of all, you also get this by here, which does, it will tell you how to install it, socket to support everything, but we will have a look now. So, first of all, you get the accessory box. So, there we go. Right, so, there's AMD, that's for AM4, AM5, then of course it comes with the thermal paste, the back plate for LGA1700, but there, and of course then it comes with the mountain. Then, this is the fan, this is a 135mm fan, as you can see, no RGB, and it is a 4-pin PWM. So, let's actually have a look at this, shall we? Okay. Ooh, wow, this is tiny. Very, very small. Okay. Let me get the boxes out of the way. And here it is. Now, this is a very... Wow, it's really small. It's a PLS Assassin, but a mini version. Wow. Look at that. That is tiny. That's really small. That is the actual normal size of the normal PLS Assassin base plate. Now, this does have six heat pipes. It also is a copper base, with obviously with a nickel plate in. When it comes to the overall Intel and AMD, it does support AM4, AM5, Intel, LGA 1700, 15, 1200, 2011 and 2066, because they do have very good backwards compatibility when it comes to thermal rate. Now, in terms of the airflow, the overall max airflow is 66.85 cfm the noise is 25.6 db so that's the overall noise of the fan overall the weight is 100 grams that's included with a wire the overall connector obviously is a pwm the stack pressure is 1.53 millimeters h2o max the connect uh, the rated voltage is DC 12 volts, of course, that's for the fan. And then, of course, then it has a SFDB bearing. That's what the fan is got by there. But what I want to show you is actually the original PLS Assassin. Now, as you can probably see, they're actually a much bigger difference, as you can see by there. Look at the overall size difference. Look at that. That is absolutely nuts. Just look at the size, right? Now there's the co-plate. There. This is a little bit bigger. It's not much bigger, but it's definitely bigger. Same mountain. It's basically the PLS Assassin 120, just in a smaller version. So, let's get this on the test bench and see if it can actually hold up to the original PLS Assassin. Okay, so this is the PLS Assassin 120 Mini. This is at 50% fan speed. It is very, very quiet. This is 100% fan speed. Now, yes, you can hear it up close, but at a far distance, honestly, you wouldn't even notice it's on. Okay, so when it comes to the overall benchmarks, and I've done my four different tests like I usually do, Cinebench, Blender Classroom, Blender Pavilion, and 3D Mark CPU test, because each individual test does hit the CPU a little bit different from the other. So the CPU I'm using is a 5900X. Yes, I've enabled PBO. And the CPU did output at 180 watts during each test. Now remember the Cinebench is also a AVX instruction set. So it will hit the entire CPU with full load. Won't hit it like you would get in a game. So 
For Cinebench, R23, the Idols are 32, Celsius for the Max of 84. Blender Classroom, Idols 32, Max 81. Blender Pavilion, Idols 32, Max 83. 3D Mark CPU test, the Idols are 32, Celsius for the Max of 72, Celsius. Now, when it comes to other coolers in its class, like the Noctua, the Noctua coolers I've done, as well as the other small form factor coolers I've done, I will make sure to put a graph by you so you guys can actually see the overall differences if you wanted or if you were looking to buy the miniature version of the Peeless Assassin. So, the graph will be shown right here while I'm talking. And from what you can probably see is that the overall temperature range is actually around the same, but at a significant cost difference to other coolers on the market. Okay then, so you saw the unboxing, you also saw the thermals, you, you heard the overall noise test. Now, as you were probably aware, that's not exactly the correct way to do a noise test. You have got to use a dB meter. But I do. I include that noise test because it gives you an indicator on what it would sound like up close. But of course, in a case with other fans, it's not going to be as loud as the overall noise test does indicate. But that's just one of the things I want. To, I still want to include it so you guys get a rough idea of how it sounds. Yes, not a dB meter, but still gives you a rough idea of what it sounds like. Fifty percent and a hundred. Now, this little cooler performed well, especially for a 5900 x with PBO enabled. The overall wattage did it 180 watts. Now, the PLS Assassin can handle over 200 watts. So, put that into consideration that this little cooler can still handle a lot of wattage when it comes to CPU. And to be honest, I think. At this present moment, the price is a little bit high. This is around the £40 mark, but it hasn't been out that long. Just like the PLS Assassin, when the SE version came out uh, not long after, that was also a bit high. It does take time for the prices to fluctuate. Do I think it's worth £40? No, because the PLS Assassin, the original, you can get for like 30 quid. So if you're looking for a better cooler, then obviously you get that. But of course, if you're looking for like a different cooler that ha maybe you have an actual straight when it comes to the overall space inside your case, it's a good option. But just remember for £40, I wouldn't exactly say buy it right now. I'd wait a little, see if the price comes down because it generally does. But other than that, it's a very good cooler. The fan isn't that loud. The overall performance was fantastic for something that's a lot smaller. I wish they had an RGB version. They don't. They only have the white and the black. Now, I will say the white does look a lot better, but that's my personal opinion. And overall, I think for AM5 and AM4 specifically, because I can't really comment on Intel, because I don't have an Intel test rig, so I can't really say. But for, it, for AMD, it performed well. So... Other than that, if you want to buy it, then of course I will leave a link down below and make sure you go check out another link that I will put down below. That will be a link for all the other Thermalry products. Make sure you buy them using that link. Gives me a kickback, helps me. And also, when I get commission off, off places like Amazon, I can buy other products that a brand won't send. So, yeah. Look, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Got a 34 inch ultra wide monitor that I've had a pixel that's coming soon, very the review. I've also got some DDR5 from A Pacer to do. I've got more, much more stuff coming. So make sure you subscribe. And as always, this is Richard from Welsh Tech. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you. Good bye.